everybody. We have the Shake It Up puppies here today, and this is their one week update. And this is our enormous litter from Van Nuys Labradoodles. This is our litter of 11 beautiful medium black and black and white party, multi-generation Australian Labradoodles. So we're here today with all the puppies and with Mama Breezy. So we're going to talk about each of the puppies today, give you their weights at one week old, let you know what's happened in this past week, let you know how Breezy's doing, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Labradoodle coats and the different coats that we have and uh, whether they're allergy friendly and asthma friendly and things like that. So we have lots of fun and interesting information for you today. So we have 11 puppies to get through. And as I mentioned in last week's video, normally when you have a large litter, the puppies do tend to segregate themselves into two groups. Because Breezy only has eight spots at the milk bar and there are 11 puppies, obviously not everybody can nurse at the same time. So there's lots of healthy competition. But in order to keep everything fair and an even playing field for all the puppies so that everyone gains weight well and as equally as possible, we will step in and separate them if we need to. Now the puppies have done a good job of rotating on their own, but what we've done is we've taken pink collar girl and green collar and we've given those two puppies to Hazel. Uh, if you're following on our YouTube channel, you'll know that Hazel has the cinnamon swirl litter of mini Labradoodle puppies, and she only has three puppies. So she has lots of extra seats at her milk bar. So we're letting her play ante to those two puppies. And it seems to be working well. We have some good weight gains to tell you about. So let's go through each of the puppies. We'll start with the group here that is not nursing. And we're going to start here with Orange Collar. This little sweetie pie is a solid black puppy and I'm just going to use my notes because we have 11 I don't remember all of their weights. So orange collar was 443 at birth and she is 560 grams today. So she's done a pretty good job of gaining weight. She hasn't doubled her birth weight but she's doing a good job of keeping up and gaining nicely. She's a really nice little puppy. She's one of the ones that we do help out to find a spot at the milk bar as she is a bit smaller. Next on our list is going to be Peach Collar Girl. And Peach Collar Girl is a black and white party. So she is half white and she is half black. And Peach is also a little sweetie pie. She is on the smaller side. I think she actually is the smallest puppy. And she's another one of the little ones that we help to make sure has a good seat at the milk bar and has a good long stay so that she can gain weight. And now Peach was 342 grams when she was born and she's up to 484 for her one week weight. So that's really good for a smaller puppy to have done. And don't you just love the little freckles on her nose? I just think those are so adorable. She's a really nice little girl. Then over here we have another one of the black puppies, another one of the smaller ones, and this is Gray Collar Girl. Gray Collar is solid black, and she is very retiring. She will not fight for a spot at the milk bar at all, so she gets the most help from us. And Gray was 394 when she was born, and she's now 470. So she's done a very nice job, but she does still need a little bit of help finding her way to a good spot at the bar. Here we go, little girl. Now over here we have Pink Collar Girl. She's a black and white party, just like the other one. And she's the one with that beautiful little beauty spot on the side of her face. And she's quite talkative. And she's the opposite from Gray. She's the biggest in the litter. And she's one of the ones that we moved over to Hazel. She needs no help at the mark milk bar. She was $3.99 when she was born, and she's at 723 grams now. And you can hear that she can make her presence known quite easily. So we'll put her over here. Then we've got right here, Purple Collar, who is another black and white party. You can see the pretty markings on the back there, and then the very pretty face. Now, Purple's pretty much right in the middle of the pack. Purple was 398 and is now 610 grams. 
So that's an excellent gain. That's really good no matter what size the litter. And in a litter of 11, that's terrific. So I'll put purple down there. Now, over here, we'll see if we can take advantage of some of the shift change here. Here we've got dark blue collar. Now, dark blue collar, originally we said was a black and white party. But if you look really closely at the face, you'll see there's lots of brown on the eyebrows and by the ears. So this puppy has sabling maybe a phantom marking we don't know yet but we'll wait and see so this is going to be a really interesting and beautifully marked puppy who's also very anxious to get back to the milk bar so i'm just going to allow that to happen oops and also had a little poop there so there's a bit on my shirt now uh and that was dark blue dark blue was 400 at birth and now is at 519. so doing well not a huge gain but still doing quite well and you may see some of the puppies do poop on me when I'm picking them up today. They, they don't have any control over that, of course. I'm just going to move these ones over here to the right side of Breezy so we don't have anybody getting squashed. Sometimes if they're in between me and Breezy, that can happen. And we don't want anyone to get squashed. And you'll see Breezy's doing quite a good job there cleaning up blue collar after that little pooping incident there. So I'm just going to reach in here and take light blue collar. Light blue collar is another one of the black puppies and not wanting to give up the milk bar spa. Light blue is also a tinier one, a very sweet and extremely feisty puppy. This puppy can make more noise than pink, even though it, this puppy is considerably smaller. 393 grams at birth and now 515 doing a great job for a little fella. So I'm just going to put that one right back there. And there we go. Now, I know we haven't done red collar yet. I'm just going to leave red collar down there for now, though. I don't want like to interfere too much when they're nursing. So I'll just give you the weights for the ones that we haven't seen yet. And then we'll pick them up later and take a look at them. So yellow collar, yellow collar is a black and white party as well. And yellow collar is the extreme party. So that's where the body is mostly white and the markings are just on the head and face. Yellow collar was 415 and now is 636 grams. So yellow is doing really well. Red collar is another one of the black puppies and red collar was 385 grams and is now 539 grams. Just moving little gray over there. And brown. Brown is another one of the big bruisers. Brown is also a black and white party. 422 grams at birth and now 628 grams. So that's all their weights. And like I said, we'll take a look at them as we go through as they lose their spots at the milk bar and we aren't interrupting them. Now, you'll see that uh, Breezy is doing quite a lot of cleanup with the puppies, and some of them have some poop on them. When they are at the milk bar like this, they often do get on top of each other, and there sometimes is some poops at, that come out. So Breezy tries to keep up and does the best that she can for cleaning them, but sometimes we have a little bit of staining until she gets right to them, especially when they're all crowded together like they are right now. Breezy was just outside before we started filming, so they're all voraciously hungry and working hard to find a spot there. They don't understand that uh, if they just wait a second, there will be a place in a moment. But Breezy herself is doing really well. Uh, she had a couple of days where she was eh, not too hungry, a little bit fussy about what she was going to eat, but she's got her appetite back now, her energy, and she's always in such good spirits she really is one of the happiest dogs that we have nothing seems to phase her or bother her if anyone was going to manage 11 puppies easily it's breezy so we're glad that she's the one that has such a big litter because she just takes it all in stride nothing phases her now we're going to talk a little bit about coats today and breezy is a, has a different coat from any of the other dogs that we have so Breezy is a light shedder and you can see I'm wearing black pants and you'll see that there's a hair on my pants here 
And that's about the amount of shedding we get. She's been lying right on top of me, right next to me for quite a while now. So there's not much shedding that she has, but she does have some shedding. So this litter we bred to our boy Bruno, as, as you know. Now Bruno has a traditional fleece non-shedding coat that is typical of an Australian Labradoodle, especially a multi-gen. And the reason why we bred those two together is Bruno has a very nice uh, coat that's quite thick and tends to be a little bit on the curly side. And that will provide us, we hope, with the puppies having a greater chance of being non-shedding. Now Breezy is, as we say, very low shedding. Her coat on her head is very soft. It has the traditional Labradoodle wave to it and, and she has that Labradoodle look on her head. But if you look at her Breezy's face, You'll see on her nose in particular, her hair is a little bit sparser there. It's not quite as fluffy as what you see in most Labradoodles. And that is typical for a dog that has a lightly shedding coat in the breed. Her coat here is just a little less soft than most of our other dogs. She still has the really pretty wave. And once we get over to here, then we have those lovely soft, soft curls that we like to see in a Labradoodle. So Breezy's coat is not typical, um, but it is also not uncommon. It is a new breed and there are coats that are different. Now mostly what you see in Australian Labradoodles are fleece coats, wool coats, and hair coats. Hair coats are the ones that tend to shed slightly and are like Breezy's, a little bit of a coarser coat. A fleece coat is the one that you see all of the poster pictures for Labradoodles where their coat is flowing, it has a slight wave or it's really basically straight, very soft, non-shedding, and the wool coat is more like a poodle coat and it looks a bit like a lamb, a very tight curl. It's very soft, it doesn't look like it would be soft, but it has that very, very tight curl. And a wool coat is the one that is thought to be the most allergy friendly. The uh, fleece coat is the one that is thought to be the most aesthetically pleasing. So those are the principal types of coats. And Breezy's coat is really a combo between a fleece and a hair coat. The hair part of it is what you will see on my slacks here where you do get a little bit of shedding. So Bruno's coat is a fleece coat. So these puppies are probably going to be some that are low shedding, and some that are non-shedding. So we're going to have to wait a while to find out because it's not something we can tell right yet. Their coats are still basically flat. Um, and as time goes on over the weeks, the coats will do what we call lifting. And that's where they start to come up away from the body and you can start to see the little bit of the wave in them. Once their coats are lifted around the seven week period, then we're going to be able to know whether or not they, these are low shedding or non-shedding puppies and uh, we'll let everybody else know the news too. Now for people who suffer from allergies, sometimes the allergy is from dander, sometimes the allergy is from the coat shedding and sometimes the allergy is from saliva. So uh, lots of times if people haven't been tested, they're not exactly sure what it is that they're allergic to when, when they say they're allergic to dogs. So if it's saliva, then that's an entirely different thing and it doesn't matter what the dog's coat is like. It depends what the dog's saliva is like. Now there's a university in Scandinavia that is able to ascertain from samples, DNA samples, if a dog is allergy friendly or not. So you can have a litter of low shedding to non-shedding Australian Labradoodles, which we would all say are allergy friendly. And in that litter, there'll be one dog that's particularly allergy friendly, and there'll be one dog that is perhaps not allergy friendly really at all. And then most of them will be somewhat in the middle. We don't have that testing available yet in Canada, so we're really hopeful that that's going to come soon because that will be really helpful for people who do have allergies because then we can easily DNA test the dog and we can say this one is going to be the best bet for you health-wise and that'll be an excellent tool for all of us. It's amazing how our DNA is, is really helping us out a lot 
and that there's a lot of things that we're able to learn about not just Australian Labradoodles, but all puppies and dogs in general. So it's a, it's a really exciting time. So the other thing is asthma. And asthma is a different topic altogether. Uh, generally speaking, Australian Labradoodles are what we call asthma friendly. And no dog is hypoallergenic. There is no such thing. And no dog is totally non-shedding. If anyone tells you that such a thing exists, they're pulling your leg. It's just simply not true. This breed is very low shedding. And when we say non-shedding, I mean they can sit on you and you don't get hair on your pants. But when you brush and comb them, there's hair that comes out. And there's always going to be hair that comes out here and there. You're not going to have a completely clean house. Mostly, but you're still going to see the odd hair here and there. And as for people with allergies, some are going to be able to tolerate this breed really well. Some are not. And it's really just something that each individual has to process and go through and determine if the breed is right for them. Same with the asthma. You have to put yourself in the situation with the breed in a controlled environment, preferably your own environment, and see. Do you have a reaction or do you not? So we encourage everybody to spend a good amount of time with a number of breeds that are associated with being allergy friendly and low shedding and see if you have a reaction, see if you have a response. If you have a friend with a Labradoodle, ideal. If you can talk them into letting you borrow that dog for a weekend or a couple of days and having the dog at home with you, that is the best way to see if you're going to react. You put your hand all over the dog and you put your hands all over your face, touch yourself everywhere and see if you respond or not. That way you don't run the risk of taking a puppy home and then having to bring the puppy back because you do have a reaction. That's always a difficult thing for people and it does happen from time to time. It's most likely it's not going to happen, but it does happen from time to time. Now the other thing about Australian Labradoodle coats and the reason why they are low shedding is they only have one coat. They're not a double coated breed. So if you look at um, the best example is the Siberian Husky. They have a very thick undercoat and that's a soft and downy coat sort of like a bird's down. And then the top coat they have more coarse hairs that are called guard hairs. The guard hairs repel the moisture from snow and rain and the downy part acts just like down in a coat for you. It keeps them very warm. So northern breeds have double coats. Most breeds do have double coats. Australian Labradoodles have one coat. They don't have that downy layer. So it's really important when we experience adverse weather situations like all of us on the west coast and the east coast are doing right now from Vancouver to Toronto to Calgary, Victoria, Nanaimo, we're all experiencing heavy snowfall and colder than normal temperatures right now. Uh, so it's really important to remember your Australian Labradoodle is not designed for cold temperatures. They can go outside and they can play in the snow, but only for short periods of time. And also their coat attracts the snow and makes those horrible little snowballs on their coat like nobody's business. So they get bunged up with snow really quickly. Now if that happens, what you want to do is bring your dog in, soak them in some nice warm water, then put a hair dryer on them, dry them off and help to melt all of that ice off. If it's on the in their pads, you want to be sure you get it out of their pads as quickly as possible because it's very uncomfortable and it stings for them. You can buy booties for them to wear. Um, if you live in Vancouver, Victoria, anywhere on the lower mainland, we don't experience snow very often. So you may not want to invest in booties because you'll probably forget where you put them on the two days it does snow. That'd be what I would do. Um, but if you live on the East Coast or on the prairies, you're going to be experiencing colder temperatures and snow more often. And so a pair of good boots is, is something that you might want to consider buying for your Labradoodle. A nice coat um, is also a good idea. On the West Coast, we buy raincoats because that's what our winter consists of. And you may want to buy a snowsuit if you're living in areas where you have a heavier snowfall during your winters. This is Mr. Brown Collar, by the way. I'm just going to show you him. He was one of the ones that was absent before. So there he is in all of his handsome self. He must be finished at the milk bar. So I'll just let him over here with Breezy. 
he's one of the ones she needs to clean up there a little bit. So they don't need to have a coat, but when it's raining all the time, um, I like to have coats if you're going for a walk. It's much easier and it's a lot uh, more convenient than having a smelly dog. So that's your little information about Australian Labradoodles for today. We hope you enjoyed that. If you liked the video and found that useful, please give us a thumbs up. Yellow Collar is going to make a little bit of a brief appearance now. She was another one of the ones that wasn't here initially. So she's what I was saying is an extreme party. And you'll see she also has the brown over her eyebrows. Everybody's getting a little bit agitated because we don't have them split up like we normally do. So we're going to end here and then uh, we will take a control of the milk bar. And we will also put pink and green back in with Hazel. So we hope you enjoyed the video and next week we'll have some more information for you. Updated weights and we may start seeing some eyes opening up with these little puppies which is always such a fun time. So we hope you subscribe to our channel and keep current with our updates for the Shake It Up litter. And thanks so much for watching. <laughs>